We've learned a lot about concussion over the last several years, and, uh, and we know that one concussion causes a problem, but in general, people recover from a single concussion. Multiple concussions can cause problems down the line, and we've seen this in retired NFL players that have had their brains autopsied, and they show early neurodegeneration called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Now, one of the interesting things about this process is that it looks like it's not just multiple concussions, but that it may be multiple subconcussive head blows. So blows that don't result in concussion may be the thing that's more important than concussion for producing this form of neurodegeneration. We were interested in knowing what happens inside the brain with these subconcussive head blows. How do we get from subconcussive head blows to neurodegeneration? Uh, and one of the things we found was that the primary problem looks like it's not so much injury to the brain that occurs with these subconcussive head blows, but injury to the blood-brain barrier. The blood-brain barrier is a gate between the brain and the peripheral circulation, and normally it's closed. So there's no communication between the proteins that bathe the brain and the peripheral circulation. Well, we think that with subconcussive head blows, actually we've demonstrated in this study that the blood-brain barrier opens up after every game, every practice, and we've shown that in, in players. That the blood-brain barrier opens up small amounts of brain protein, in particular a protein called S100B, leak into the peripheral circulation. And then it looks like the body forms antibodies to that protein because it's not used to seeing that protein in the peripheral circulation. And we speculate that when the blood-brain barrier opens up again, those antibodies then enter the brain and potentially do damage now to the brain. So this research kind of uh, begs the question, is the injury to the brain not so much a traumatic phenomenon but an autoimmune phenomenon? And this is a very different way of thinking about how trauma could cause long-term neurodegeneration than we've been used to thinking. And uh, there are other diseases that have an autoimmune basis, and this would certainly open up a whole array of different therapeutic options for interfering with this process of autoimmunity and neurodegeneration. Um, and we have not even begun to consider these therapeutic options in, in head trauma now. And, and I think that if these results can be confirmed by others, we may have another way uh, or another avenue to pursue in terms of trying to prevent multiple subconcussive head blows from progressing to early Alzheimer's, basically, neurodegeneration.